Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you the coolest custom creations I happen to find people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. Like always, there are way more than just 10 cool creations. Everything is linked in the description below and more if you want to learn about these designers. I don't really present them in any particular order of best to worst, just a bunch of models I really like. And before we jump into the builds for this week, first I'd like to say that the custom building instructions that have popped up in the web store this week come from the designer Tan Bricks, and we have the Invisible Hand at Nanoscale. It is a super solid model with some great details when you look really close. It has a really great destruction function function as well. It breaks in half just like it does in the movie. And if you wanted to see the full video on this model, everything is linked in the description below. Also with the launch of the final season of The Expanse, the builder Kevin has updated his Rocinante and Razorback bundle. There's a new color combo, some sticker detailing, and now let's jump into some honorable mentions of the week. Palixa and the Bricks has some great minions builds. They're based on some of the sets, but the design has been expanded out, which looks awesome. Jacob Kaiser mocks built the Rural Salukami Star Wars diorama. It's more of a vignette style build, but some great details included. Here's a collaborative mock from the WOW lug, W-A-W, recently shown off in a convention in Warsaw. It is classic space themed, tons of great shapes, and believe it or not, from the designer Shio, this is the Temple of Technology. This is actually built at a modular scale. So technically you could fit this in between two different modular creations. And then here is Chris Perron's L00P5, just a fun mech design with some new shapes being used for the body structure. All right, let's jump now into top 10 of the week. This first one up here is from Little John and the title is Winterful Journey. The toy winder key is the seed piece for some of those autumn or now winter leaves. I like the Wookiee pieces used to outline some of the bark detailing for the base of the tree and we have some awesome forced perspective for mountains trees and houses in the distance also those rounded one by two plates used for the stone pathway was a really interesting way to add just a little bit of extra texture Corvin Stitchert built what looks like a minifig scale pelican from Halo. There are some amazing shapes here. I really enjoy the way the cockpit was put together. It's totally brick built with a combination of panels, flags, and actual trans bricks. The shaping along the top has some especially nice angles, and it's impressive to see such a uh, strangely shaped ship actually work so well in physical bricks. I'd be curious to know how strong it is. Number eight is from Jonathan Elliott. This is Set 605 Remake. He was inspired by another designer who's been revisiting like ancient Lego sets. This taxi build is no different. It came from a set back in 1971. So it's a 50 year old set with some really interesting takes for car shaping. I especially like the way the back bumper was done. The detailing for the wheels is super, super simple and sleek. And if you haven't seen Jonathan Elliott's car builds yet, I highly recommend you take a look at this builder's approach to minifig scale car designs. Now here's a pretty epic scene from Andreas Lenander. The title is The Final Stand, and that certainly does seem to be the case here. It is a two-tongued dragon with a super creepy looking mouth glowing eyes and the night seems to be coming out of the mist on the large peak you better hope this dragon can't breathe fire because this final stand looks like it might not last too long this is part of an entry for the monstrous encounters over at brick scalibur and certainly my favorite bit of design detail here is just the shaping for the mouth now we have another truly epic scene created from the builder Lego Nuts. The title is Late Night Snacks. You've got Kai and Lloyd picking up some noodles on one of these floating futuristic junk ships. It is very uh, reminiscent of the fifth element scene. They're floating above the cloud line, but you can still see that much of the city in the background is still very awake and vibrant with the light. The roof detailing on the ship is great with those mop pieces. There's some really creative uh, design choices made for the background and the foreground. Plus I like that he included uh, that Kai and Lloyd have their speeders parked to the side of the ship there. Really, really fun build. And then maybe this ship could possibly fit within the same universe, maybe flying around this futuristic city. From Tim Goddard, this is the Wandering Peacock. It does look a little bit more war-oriented or fighter-oriented. It's got some 
guns on either side, perhaps rockets in the center. The front seems to mimic a two-pronged Viper aesthetic, though it is a little bit different. We have a fun build for a tail design in the back and just a combination of intricate and interesting shapes that make up both the wings and the hull, plus an extremely loud color palette. Now, I know folks always take it a little bit weird sometimes when I show a realistic gun design. It is a very rare thing, and I only do it when the build is honestly just one of the best builds of the week, and I certainly think that's the case here from Cole Edmondson. This is a LEGO M1911A1. The goal here looks to be to get this model looking as hyper-realistic as possible, probably a one-to-one -one scale if I had to guess, and the shaping is really, really solid here. He does say that the trigger is spring-loaded, and I personally just like the way the connection comes together for the angle of the handle. Now we're jumping down to the final three. Here is another Vietnam facade from the larger collection of the builder Know Your Pieces. Specifically, we're now looking at a repair shop. This builder likes to put things together at a bit of an upscale compared to minifigures. There are some awesome details included here. You can see an air compressor, a generator, a toolkit. Actually, he even has a picture of a few of the main builds that are attached to this facade, plus some individual pictures of this three-wheeled trike. And you can see that this designer really does take advantage of the larger scale and just fits more and more and more details into the space that he's allowed himself. The brick belt lettering is great. The overgrown vine details is awesome, plus the texturing for the tiled ground floor at the base. All right, we're now jumping over to an extremely clean looking model design. This is the RX-12 Pegasus. UAV from the designer Red Space Cat. This designer really does take into account all the smooth and clean lines that UAVs are generally known for. Frankly, I'm having trouble finding out how a few of these connections even came together. They are just so precise, and it also helps that this model is built in primarily white, where your eyes can be more easily drawn to the clean lines that the Lego bricks create. It seems to be scaled pretty close with Technic figures, and he also also created a uh, wide variety of armaments that can attach to the wings. It's a really, really cool looking model. And now let's jump on over to the last build of the week. This is from Douglas Hughes. The title is White Bridge. You can certainly guess maybe why the title of this larger diorama has the name White Bridge. It is an extremely unique design and particularly eye-catching considering uh, the thin arch seems to have almost no supports, just those tiny little supports on either end close to the river. I've got a question for you. Do you think those horses can really walk up something so smooth and so steep right at the right at the base of either end of the bridge? Regardless, it is an awesome looking build and it matches up extremely well with both the canal section at the bottom and the particularly bright and vibrant buildings once you've entered into the town. The towers and spires have some fun shapes and I also appreciate that the ground is made up of what look to be much larger stone slabs. It's not quite cobblestone. It's a bit bigger than that. And it's just a texture I haven't seen done quite in that scale before. Anyways, that is it for my personal favorite top 10 mocks of the week. Like always, let me know which models were your favorites in the comments below. Remember to check out the links I've left in the description below if you want to learn more about the designers or check out our web store, BrickVault.Toys. Thank you again for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoy our content, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, or share. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.